Hey everyone, this is Zach Hample at Fenway Park in Boston. Always a pleasure to be here, but I do have to start this video by telling you some bad news, followed by some good news. Now the bad news is that the game last night lasted 15 innings. They finished playing around one in the morning, so probably no batting practice today because these precious athletes need to rest, they gotta sleep late, so it's gonna be tough to catch baseballs. But the good news is that this dude is gonna be with me all day. This is Chris, my videographer, AKA Fenway Chris. You guys might recognize him from that amazing video we did here two years ago, which got 1.6 million views, which I'll link to in the description for this one. And last time we were here, this guy really hooked it up. He's practically the mayor of Fenway Park. He used to work here, knows everybody. What's going on, Brendan? No, we'll catch up. Social I'm... hour is over, my friend. We have to right. focus. We gotta focus for the people. So is it true once again, that we are gonna get hooked up with special passes that get us inside extra early? Yes. I like that. And is it true that we are gonna be able to access parts in the stadium that the general public doesn't get to go to? Yes. Can we get down to the clubhouse? No. Nope. Can I operate one of the TV cameras during the game? Definitely not, no, no, no. Can I pinch hit for JD Martinez in the eighth inning? Maybe. Oh, I like that. So this is probably the last selfie style shot that you're gonna see. This guy will be filming from here on out. So um, right out. let's get to it. Hey, there he is. I heard you be here. What's going on? How are you, man? Uh, you really a popular guy. Thanks a lot. Yeah, right here. There's two windows, but it's probably right here. Okay. Is that straight? Straight as can be. <laughs> gotta, gotta put some glue on it, kid. You're ready. Let's go. Well, as I predicted, no batting practice today. You can see there's a whole lot of nothing happening out on the field, except for about 100 Giants fans who obviously got field access to hang out on the warning track. So the no BP thing is a huge bummer for me, but it's probably especially frustrating for them. I'm sure a lot of them have traveled here from the West Coast. So you can see I'm in my Giants hat for right now. I'm gonna grab my glove out of my bag because there are a couple of Giants players playing catch and I would love to get on the board early with a toss up. So let's do it. Well, that's pretty cool. Johnny Cueto, just walking around the stands. No big deal. Thanks a lot. Logan Webb, number 62 on the board. Ooh. Thought I was the only one here. <laughs> Not a whole lot of space around here, but that's what makes it charming, right? So the Red Sox are out there just starting to play catch, and I think I just saw a baseball land somewhere down in here. And since it's nice and early, we can do this. Oh, well, how about that? 
Yoink. And um, one more thing. <laughs> so that's four baseballs today, and I really haven't done anything to deserve this other than be friends with Chris. Thank you, Chris. Whenever I get inside stadiums extra early, and it doesn't happen that often, of course I love grabbing some extra baseballs in the process, but my favorite part about it is just being able to wander anywhere I want, not have to deal with stadium security, not have to battle the crowds, and it's so chill. It just feels like it's my personal stadium. Now today, right field foul line, a few Red Sox pitchers were out there hanging out. It's so quiet, I could actually overhear their conversations about pitching mechanics. Andrew Kashner was leading that discussion, Ryan Brazier was with him, and I think Eduardo Rodriguez as well. And I gotta give a shout out to Craig Bjornsson, the Red Sox bullpen coach, who's super friendly. I got to know him a few years ago when he was with the Astros, and it's always nice to catch up with him a bit. Now, right before the players walked off, we got a very quick shot of Brazier tossing me my fifth baseball of the day, kind of unexpectedly, but I'll definitely take it. And I should also give a shout out to Juan Centeno, a catcher on the Red Sox who tossed my second ball of the day a little while back over by the Red Sox dugout. So despite the lack of batting practice, I'm still putting up some good numbers. I can see for right now that the entire Giants pitching staff is out there along the left field foul line. They're probably gonna start playing catch soon, and the whole stadium is gonna open soon, so I'll wander back that way in just a bit. But for right now, again, while it's so quiet, and I don't have to shout, I wanna give some love to SeatGeek, all right? Because they've sponsored a bunch of videos in the past. They're sponsoring this one, too. So, SeatGeek is an app that gathers tickets from all over the internet into one spot to make it so easy to use, very user friendly. And as I've mentioned, one of my favorite features on the app is that when you're looking at the seating chart, they put little colored dots all over it so you can tell right away how good of a deal you're getting. Now check this out, here is how they're gonna hook it up for you. You're already gonna check the description for this video, right? Because I'm gonna link to that epic Fenway video that I did a couple years ago. So while you're there, look for the link that you can use to download the SeatGeek app, all right? And on your very first purchase of $30 or more, enter the promo code Zach, Z-A-C-K, and you will get a $20 discount. That is huge savings. So definitely take advantage. If you're going to playoff games, use SeatGeek for that. If you're seeing other sports, if you're seeing any type of live show when you can buy tickets, check out SeatGeek first. Six, baby. Now that was a little bit tricky because it was my fault. I knocked the ball closer and it actually got tucked underneath the little overhang of the padding on the bottom of the wall and I thought, oh my God, there's nobody here. It's just such an easy baseball with the glove trick and I knocked it out of view. So I actually had to swing my glove out harder to knock it back even harder to bank it off that inner wall and it rolled out a bit so I got it. Now if you want to actually swing the camera that way, I'm going to keep talking. There's another baseball on the warning track. That was actually an overthrow from the Giants all the way from the left field foul line. So I'm gonna get up there, up on top of that, I don't know, it's like a 15 foot wall or so, and see if I can do the glove trick from up there before someone hopefully comes out of that doorway and grabs it. So, up we go. Thank you. 
So, sometimes plans change. Just a few minutes ago, I was over on the right field foul line talking about how I was going to go to the left field foul line for the Giants, but then we saw Johnny Cueto in the bullpen, got right up behind him, and then I saw one of the Giants overthrow a ball that rolled into the corner, you know, that Bermuda Triangle where it's like 420 to the wall. So I got that with the glove trick, and while I was doing it, another one came out, and of course you saw me get that one. So, the Giants are basically done throwing for right now. I think there's there's like one guy still playing, but to get halfway around the stadium when they're about to open, I think it would take too long. So, Chris has suggested that we get back outside to Yawkey Way or whatever that street is called on... Jersey Street. Jersey, thank you. You know, like I said, this guy used to work here. Uh, the pregame show, he knows people. There's going to be some former players out there, so let's see if we can chat with those guys. Here we go. Wow. Yeah. You can get just here anytime you want, but for some reason they like Chicago fans too. Unfortunately, we got outside to the Nesson stage just a bit too late to say hello to all the guys. Tom Caron, along with former Red Sox players Tim Wakefield and Todd Walker, were just getting ready to jump on the air, but it was great to hang out there for a bit and check out all the hoopla in the street. First of all, I played catch with a guy who's about 10 feet tall, wearing stilts, of course. Big League Brian is his name. I tried to make a catch behind my back and failed miserably. I blame it on my big puffy jacket getting in the way, but it's going to be very cold here tonight, so I had to wear it. We also saw a dance squad performing, along with tons of people standing around watching. Great vibes at this place, as always. Then we headed back inside, up a ramp, into the electrical jack-free area. Security is pretty chill here overall, but when it comes to electrical jacks, there is no messing around. After that, we took a short elevator ride to level 5 to check out the amazing view. No matter where you go inside Fenway Park, it looks incredible. I remember my first game here ever with my parents back in 1991. I don't think I realized at that time how special it is, but now that I've been here 20 times over the years and visited 57 different Major League Baseball stadiums, it truly stands out like no other venue. For right now, we got about 25 minutes till game time. You can see the Boston skyline back in the distance. I am going to get downstairs and leave my videographer Chris up here. We heard a rumor that Carl Yastrzemski is going to throw out the ceremonial first pitch. His grandson, Mike Yastrzemski, is here with the Giants. So I'm going to see how close I can get. We'll see which one of us gets the better shot. You can decide. Leave a comment. Let us know. So gonna win this competition. I almost feel bad for Chris because this isn't even a fair fight. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the Impossible Dream Team of 1967. His phenomenal play and clutch hitting led the team to the pennant. Ladies and gentlemen, won't you please welcome the greatest living Red Sox player, accompanied by his beloved grandson, What do you guys think? How did we do? Who won the videography competition? 
you know what? There's no winners or losers here. None. This is a team effort. Team. And right now, if you can see behind me out on the field, the game is underway. We are gonna eat very quickly and then get out to our seats. You ready for that? Let's go. I think that's gonna be a team effort also. What's up, big guy? Damn! Look at that. Whoa. How are you? Who let you in here? What's up, guards? Hang off. Hey, 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 it's on. It's on. It's on already. What you doing? No. I think I did, but I got to it. I said this was going to be quick. But when Jim Rice welcomes you into the media dining room and then there's all this food and all this dessert, sometimes you just need to sit here for an inning or two and relax and soak it in. It's been that kind of day here in Boston. Mm. seats tonight in straightaway right field directly behind the visitors bullpen. Once again, I just love being so close to the players. All the relievers out here for the Giants are doing various drills and warm-ups to prepare to come into the game. I don't know if they're really going to get a shot tonight because Jeff Samarja, the Giants starter, has not given up a hit through five innings. It's four to nothing right now. Giants are on top, top of the sixth. So, you know, I got my glove ready. I have this huge walkway right behind me where there's all kinds of room to run for a ball if they hit one. But right now, only one of the two teams has done anything offensively. Too good. 112 miles an hour off the bat. Exit velo off the charts. Quick hands inside pitch. What can you do? Insta Live, there he is, Insta Live. 
from Fenway Park. This place has really cleared out. That's what happens when it's the ninth inning and the home team is losing by five runs. Giants are on top right now, seven to two. And as you can see, I'm back upstairs, got my glove ready. This is a pretty good foul ball spot, but actually the reason I'm here is that we are going to try to catch up with a different Hall of Famer after the game ends, someone on the broadcast crew. So we only have five outs to go, so we'll see what happens. We have a final here at Fenway Park, and the Giants put up a five spot in the ninth inning to win this game convincingly by the score of 11 to three. Now after the final out, there was still a whole lot of activity out on the field. When this whole stadium had pretty much cleared out, there was still a huge crowd of Giants fans behind the third base dugout to cheer on Bruce Bochy, their manager, who became just the 11th person in Major League history to pick up 2,000 wins as a manager. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we got a quick glimpse of Dennis Eckersley coming out of the press level, saying hello to Chris, and then ducking into the elevator. Chris is seriously the man around here. He knows everybody. He was shaking hands and giving hugs all day, from security to the TV people, you name it, the broadcasters as well. And we had such a great time wandering all over this place once again, downstairs, upstairs, into the media dining room. We were inside early. I mean, you saw all this throughout this video. Just incredible. I got seven baseballs. That brings my lifetime total to 11,077. So, you know, we have a long drive right now back to New York City. We're probably not getting out of here till 11 p.m. We're probably not getting home till three to four in the morning, so we're gonna be wiped out tomorrow, but hey man, it's worth it. This is what I love about the baseball season, just going hard. Anyway, we gotta go. Thank you so much for watching. Yankee Stadium video coming next. Stay tuned for that. Later, guys. It's amazing how much people love oh Chris God. after oh, he leaves. Wow, those are some harsh words. More and more each day. Great to see you, Chris. Like Elvis.